Um, welcome again. Aloha. I'm Chaplain Chip Fields, uh, uh, MCOM Pacific Regional Chaplain, and uh, we're currently in the Book of Genesis. I think uh, we're starting this week, we're going to start um, Chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see here. Yeah, Chapter 7, we're going to talk a little bit about separation. Um, but before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll do a little recap from last week. <clears throat> Lord, now may you teach us from your word. May you strengthen our spirit. May you enlighten the eyes of our understanding uh, so that we can grow closer with you and walk with you and enjoy a, a relationship with you here on earth that will last into eternity. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, a little bit uh, recap from last week. Um, we talked about how that God does not always strive with humans, uh, and I think our memory verse was uh, um, Genesis 6, 3, my spirit shall not always strive with man because that he also is flesh. And so we see um, you know, worldwide, worldwide flood, worldwide deluge, that um, God said there is a time when uh, he gives you over to your own desires, and uh, we never know when that time is, so it's always important to respond to the uh, um, reaching out by God to us uh, to attempt to uh, establish a relationship with us, a relationship that was lost in the fall, um, but that he sent his son to uh, bridge that gap, to tear down the wall, and to uh, make a way for us to, again to come to know him. And so. Um, there is a time, and we never know when that is, and so it's important uh, to respond to God's calling um, as soon as you know what's happening. And then we talked about the heart, how a lot of people say, I just follow my heart. Uh, my heart tells me uh, where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do. My heart is true. Actually, Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us the heart is uh, wicked and deceptive. Who can know it? That's Jeremiah 17, 9. So it's, it's important uh, to remember to trust the Word, trust the Word of God, uh, walk with Him using His Word and with prayer, but be careful if you're relying totally upon your heart because your heart is deceptive and uh, ultimately is wicked. And um, in the end, it may not take you down the path that you, initially, that you uh, wanted to end up. I, I tell a lot of people that uh, how um, how tragic it would be to uh, follow your heart and uh, climb the ladder of success your entire life only to find at the end of your life it was resting against the wrong wall the entire time. Um, only the scripture can tell us which wall to place our ladder upon and so remember to, to uh, trust in the scriptures. Um, we talked about last week's memory verse too. Uh, God destroyed um, the earth as we know it before the flood, by a flood, and by water. Uh, according to scripture, next time it's going to be by fire. But um, at this point it was water and all the living creatures on the land and the birds of the air uh, were destroyed except for one family, family of eight, Noah, his wife. Um, his three sons, their, daughter, their wives, and then of course the animals that he instructed them to take upon the ark. But there are other times in the scripture God destroyed. Um, Genesis 6, 17, God says, Behold, I, even I, am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. Genesis 19, 13, we are about, and this is uh, in reference to Sodom, uh, we are about to destroy this place, the angels said, because their outcry has become so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Uh, Exodus 32, the Lord said to Moses, and this is after the people had uh, worshipped the golden calf, when Moses had, and uh, Joshua had gone up the mountain. God said, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. Now let me alone, that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them, and that I will make of you a great nation. Uh, Jeremiah 15, 6, God says, You 
who have forsaken me, declares the Lord. You keep going backward, so I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am tired of relenting. Uh, and then Exodus, I mean Ezekiel 22, 30, uh, where God said, I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found none. So you may ask yourself, you know, what right does God have to destroy uh, things around us, his creation? Well, I like to say, you need to remember that God knows what's best. Uh, a lot of times it doesn't tell us what's going through his mind, but perhaps he could see the end of what would happen if he were to allow it and how it would uh, not only destroy, for instance, the flood, not only would it might have destroyed uh, or taken everything down with it in the world, but also Noah's family as well. And then there would be no righteous people on the earth. Um, and so he could see the end of something. He knows what's going to happen. Uh, and, and if he thinks that there's something going on in this world that would ultimately lead to destruction uh, by practicing ungodly, uh, committing ungodly acts and, and practicing ungodly things, uh, maybe he sees that, you know what, this is not going to end good. I need to stop this right now. And he has the right to do it. He, he's the author of life. He's the giver of life. He can take life. Um, we need to trust that he has our best interest at heart. He knows what's best. Um, and so we're looking at chapter 7. Uh, let me get my Bible here. So I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate. Oh, i got to fix this. That's better. Um, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And so God is now instructing Noah after he built this ark to now to embark on the ark with his family and all the uh, creatures that God told him to bring there. Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. Notice how God said that, that uh, he told Noah that you alone have I found righteous in my sight. Now, I'm pretty sure Noah was not righteous in the sight of other people. Um, remember the bifurcation we talked about uh, in Genesis, I believe it was 5, where that um, Cain started his family on an ungodly line, and it was a, basically an earthly or a worldly line. I'm going to live for the world, live for the earth. Uh, and then uh, Seth started another line, and the scripture says and people started to call on the name of the Lord. So you see this bifurcation, this road, um, and this choice that we have actually... Uh, it comes. The scripture comes to mind. Matthew 7:13. Enter, enter in through the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. For straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that to le that leads to life, and few there be that find it. So many, many take the path, the worldly path, but very few take the godly path. And more than likely, Noah, I'm sure, found favor in the sight of the Lord. But I'm sure Noah did not find favor in the sight of all those others living uh, uh, for the world and uh, being defined by the world. Uh, Luke 16, 15 tells us, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So we start to see this separation, how important it is uh, to be separated from the world. Although Paul said not, not to leave the world completely. I mean, we gotta live in the world, but be separated. So you gotta find, you gotta know what that fine balance is as you're living your life, to be separated from the world, but also be in connection with them uh, so you can help them out and give them the message of hope. Um, and then uh, and then he says, you shall take with you of every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female, and of the animals that are not clean too, a male and his female. So instead of, you know, two of every, I mean, a pair of every animals. There are some he was, he was telling them to bring seven pairs, and so pre to prepare for uh, sacrifices when he got to dry land. 
um, he was preparing for that. And I think I'm going to end. Yeah, no, I'm not going to end on this. But so Noah found favor in the sight of God. I always, as as a patriarch, I always looked to him, Enoch, uh, and um, I mean obviously David and others, Moses. But how that? I mean, what is it that they had uh, that I don't have? You know, how do they walk with God? Um, I remember Russell Wilson once of the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, he was talking about his youth and um, his, you know, he he said he wanted to be one of the great quarterbacks, but you know, uh, it's just it's just a bridge too far. It's too much. But his dad asked him these three simple words: Why not you? You know, why not you, Russell? Why don't you? Why can't you do it? And so I, I asked myself that: Hey, if those guys can do it, why not me? I'm a human. They're a human. I can walk with God too. But it, you have to seriously want it. Um, I think, uh, I can't remember who it is, but it came up with a VIM model, the vision, uh, V-I-M, vision, intention, and means. The vision means what do you want. The intention means, um, you know, how, what are you willing to give, right, to uh, get there. And the means is, is, uh, is the path that you're going to take to get there. And so you, you got to know what you want. You got to be serious about getting there, and then you got to figure out what it's going to take to get there. And so, a lot of it is simply um, spiritual, spiritual disciplines: getting up every day, reading the Word, praying, um, and, and staying in, on a constant relationship, walking with Him. Um, and you find yourself, little by little, getting closer every day. Ezekiel fourteen fourteen, God was telling. Uh, the prophet, he said, even though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in its midst, by their own righteousness, they could only deliver themselves, declares the Lord. That's a big compliment. God was saying, you know, if those three guys were there, he said that uh, they, could only, they couldn't even deliver the land, they could only deliver themselves. That's a big compliment. I would love for God to say something like that about me. And so that's a, that's a worthy goal to shoot for. And finally, I want to finish up with that there is a time coming. Um, you can look this up, well, Luke, two, Luke 13, 6 through 9, the parable of the fig tree. Um, and then uh, finally, Genesis 7, 16, where the scripture says, after they got onto the ark, the scripture says, the Lord closed it behind him to remember there is a time when God gives you over to your own desires. Remember, we read Romans 1, 24 last time. God gave them over to their own desires. So there's a, and remember, I said there's two types of people in the world. Uh, those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, your will be done. And so you just got to know there's a time coming where God's going to give you over to what you want. Um, and we never know when that is. So uh, next week, um, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to pick it up from there. And um, I hope you uh, stay with us. Um, we got a lot to talk about in this book. It's a foundation for almost every a single major um, a theme and, uh, and subject, and uh, what we call uh, systematic theology. It's a, it's a basis for almost all of it for the rest of the Bible. You get this down in Genesis, you'll have it down for the rest of the scriptures. Let us pray. Lord, now we pray that uh, you'll help us to know again, Lord, that there's a time coming when you will give us over to our own desires. May we Lord, give, uh, give you that which is uh, pleasing to you. May we seek you out. Um, may we always, Lord, want to be like the patriarchs who walked with you. And may, that, may we have that goal in mind, Lord, that, um, that we would love someday, Lord, for you also to say that we found favor in your eyes, just like those guys, Noah, uh, David, Moses, and, those great, and Enoch, and those great patriarchs. Lord, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.